Assalamu alaikum. How are you all? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, fine, sir. How are you? Alhamdulillah, fine. Any doubt from last class to anyone of you? About this expansion? Uh, no, sir. Okay, let's start. New part of this chapter is calorimetry. Calorimetry is the study of exchange of heat from one body to another, which results in change in temperature of body or which result in change state of them. This study is called calorimetry. So calorimetry is the study of exchange of heat between bodies which result in change of temperature or state. So depending upon change, we may define this calorimetry into two parts. First, the heat responsible for change in temperature is called specific heat or simply heat capacity. And the other one which causes to change in state is called latent heat. Let me define you using conservation of energy about its principle. Principle of calorimetry based on conservation of energy You can say <clears throat> heat lost by one body must equals to heat gained by the other. Heat lost by one body must equals to heat gained by another. if there is no loss of energy in some other form as well. Hiba, is it clear? Yes, sir. So we divide this heat into two parts. First, the heat, which is responsible to change temperature of body causes to change in temperature and the second heat which causes to change in state so first part the heat which is responsible for change in temperature will be heat capacity Second is specific heat capacity. Third is molar specific heat capacity. Heat which causes to change in state will be first latent heat of fusion to change state from solid to liquid. Second, 
latent heat of vaporization that is conversion of liquid into vapor khalid any doubt Okay, just write it down, all of you, till this part. Salman, done. Yes, sir. Now let me explain you these different terms. First is heat capacity. It is the amount of heat required to change temperature of a particular substance by unity, one degree Celsius or one Kelvin at normal atmospheric pressure. So it is the amount of heat is required to change the temperature of substance by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin at normal atmospheric pressure. So Q equals to S times delta T. This S is called heat capacity. 
constant having unit related to this expression will be joule per kelvin or joule per degree centigrade next is specific heat capacity or specific heat constant so for the above part heat capacity there is no mention about how much amount of matter will require to change its temperature so for a specific part we mention amount of substance to be some unit or 1 kg so it is the amount of heat is required to change <clears throat> the temperature of 1 kg substance by 1 degree centigrade or 1 kelvin at normal atmospheric pressure so it will be q equals to mass of substance specific heat constant times change in temperature so this s is called specific heat constant or specific heat capacity it may have some different value related to a different different term let me define you some of most important part for which you have to learn or you have to memorize a specific heat capacity for ice specific capacity for vapor it will be 0.5 calorie per gram per kelvin in case of water which would be maximum for all different substances it will be 1 calorie per gram per kelvin so for this part let me define you how to convert 1 calorie equals to 4.186 joule or you may write 4.2 joule hamza is it clear yes sir okay just write it down to this part Sir, the unit for specific heat capacity is same, right? You may define according to this formula. S will be equals to Q by M delta T. So unit will be joule per kg per Kelvin. Khaled, is it clear? Yes, sir.
Hamza, Dan? Yes, sir. Next is, if the amount of substance is measured in terms of mole, let's say in case of gas, so this above term will be called as molar specific heat constant or capacity. So it will be the amount of heat is required to change the temperature of one mole gas by one degree centigrade or one Kelvin at given condition. This molar specific heat constant will be different for different process of gas. I will define you in thermodynamics. We mainly have four different processes, isothermal, adiabatic, isochoric, isobaric. So related to each different process for the same gas, you will get different molar specific heat constant. So <clears throat> Q equals to number of moles times C times change in temperature, delta T. So the C is called molar specific heat constant or capacity. So it's assigned related to this part will be joule per mole per Kelvin. Now, if you compare these two different quantity, heat capacity, molar specific heat constant, so you'll get S equals to mass of substance times specific heat constant equals to number of moles times molar specific constant. You may convert number of moles as given mass by molar mass. So this is the relation between these three different heat. Iba, any doubt? So these three different heat will be responsible to change the temperature of that particular substance. Next is latent heat of fusion. So fusion means state of conversion from ice to water. So it will be the amount of heat is required to change one kg solid into liquid. at its melting point and normal atmospheric pressure. So Q equals to mass of substance times latency of vaporization constant. So this L is called latent heat of fusion constant. So related to this part, its SI unit will be joule per kg. So for ice, just remember latent heat of fusion for ice will be 80 calorie per gram. 
and one last part. Latent heat of vaporization. It will be amount of heat to convert into convert from liquid into vapor or just vice versa. So you will say the amount of heat is required to change one kg liquid into vapor at its boiling point and normal atmospheric pressure. So it will be Q equals to mass of substance times latent heat of vaporization. So it will be latent heat of vaporization constant. For vapor, latent of vaporization constant is equals to 540 calorie per gram. Just write it down to this part first. Answer. Answer.
Okay. <clears throat> so I have just defined these three different terms. So on the basis of this definition, if you have to solve any problem, so let me define you how to solve. So related to each different process, first try to plot the graph and on the basis of which you may try to define which one is going from one state to another or from one temperature to another. So let me define you variation of temperature versus heat. Variation of temperature versus heat. This is temperature versus heat. Suppose ice is initially at minus 10 degrees Celsius. So if you supply heat to that ice, its temperature will change from minus 10 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. So this heat will be responsible to change its temperature. So we can call it as specific heat. Further, <clears throat> at this point, its state will be ice. So if you supply heat, so it will start melting into water. So at this point, it may convert it into water. So the heat supplied at this point to convert ice into water will be termed as latent heat of fusion. Further, if you apply supply heat, temperature of this particular water will start rising up from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So it will be called as specific heat to change its temperature from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So at this point, temperature will be 100 degrees Celsius, zero degrees Celsius. Now, if you further supply heat, state of water is in liquid at this point. If you further supply heat, may start changing its state from liquid to vapor. Like this. At this point, it will become vapor. This heat supplied to this water to change state from water to vapor will be termed as latent heat of vaporization. Further, if you supply heat, there will be change in temperature from this point to this. So it will be termed as specific heat to change temperature of paper from 100 degrees Celsius to further higher temperature. Hamza? Any doubt related to this graph? Uh, sir, can you explain the second one again, the part from uh, changing from ice to water? Initially, at zero degrees Celsius, state would be ice. So on supplying heat, it will start converting into water without significant change in temperature. So we'll say 
this heat supplied to the system will be hidden. That's why it is called latent, hidden heat. Why there is no temperature change in temperature? So you will say heat supplied to the system would be utilized in changing its or utilized in breaking of bond. That's why there will be no change in temperature during change of state. So ice get completely converted into water at same temperature, zero degrees Celsius. So this will be latent heat of fusion. At this point, if you supply heat, so its temperature start rising up from zero to maximum 100 degrees Celsius. So this will be termed as specific heat. Now, again, at this point, if you supply heat, its state will start changing from liquid to vapor and there will be no significant change in its temperature till whole liquid get converted into water vapor. Since amount of heat supplied to the system would be utilized in breaking off bond, so there will be no significant change in its temperature. So it will remain same at 100 degrees Celsius. And further, if you supply more heat, temperature of this vapor will start raising up from 100 degrees Celsius to further higher temperature. Hamza, is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, related to this graph, you will be asked first question about slope of these three different specific heat. Let's say this inclination is theta one, this inclination is theta two, and this inclination is theta three. So what will be the relation between theta one, theta two, and theta three? Let me define you. In this curve, we have numerated as temperature or perpendicular vertical line as temperature and horizontal line as heat. So according to the formula, heat supplied or ejected out equals to M times S times change in temperature. So move this DQ to right side and rest of the term to left side. So you will get one by M into S equals to DT divided by DQ. So just see this right hand segment. We have DT that is numerator part and which is perpendicular related to this graph and DQ base or horizontal line related to this graph. So this particular ratio will also define you slope of this particular graph. Khalid, is it clear? Yes, sir. Now just try to compare this particular slope on what it is depending upon. So you'll observe it depends upon S, that is specific heat constant related to that process. This slope may be also called as tan theta. And this slope tan theta is inversely proportional to a specific heat. I defined you above three different specific heat constant that is for ice, water, and vapor. Let me show you. Just see this part. We have for ice and vapor equal specific heat that is 0.5 and for water one calorie per gram. It means a specific heat of water is greater as compared to ice and vapor. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So at this point, you will say since a specific heat of ice equals to specific heat of vapor and these two specific heat is smaller as compared to water. And a specific heat is inversely proportional to slope of this particular curve.
since specific heat is inversely proportional to slope, so smaller the value of specific heat, it will have larger slope or larger inclination. So we can say theta one, that is for ice, equals to theta three, that will for vapor, and these two slope will be greater as compared to theta two for water. So this is the first relationship between the slope related to this graph. Hamza, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, just draw this. You are done. All done, sir. Done, sir. Now, next question related to this graph or on the basis of this graph, here will be answer. It will be easier for you to answer. Suppose if you'll be asked at same temperature, 100 degrees Celsius, which will be more effective or which will be more cause severe burn in boiling water or vapor? A vapor. So just according to this graph, you will see vapor having more amount of heat as compared to water at same temperature. So you will say vapor will cause more severe burn as compared to water at same temperature. Good. Next, suppose if I ask you at same temperature, ice and water. So which will give you more relief or which will cause 
more cooling at same temperature ice or water sir so ice good you say using this particular graph since ice having more cold energy as compared to water so it will be more effective in cooling as compared to water at same temperature so next first question will be why there is no significant change in temperature during change of state so you will say during change of state amount of heat supplied to the system is utilized in breaking of bond to change their state hence there is no significant change in temperature will be observed next at same temperature which will be more effective in cooling or it will be more effective in causing severe burn at same temperature let's say 100 degrees celsius vapor will have more heat energy as compared to water so can cause more severe burn similarly at same temperature zero degree celsius ice will have more cold energy as compared to water so can cause more or simply to say it will be more effective in cooling so can be more effective in cooling kiba any doubt Okay, just write it no, down. No, no doubt.
Done. Hamza, written? Yes, sir. Done. Now, related to this whole process, let me give you how to solve problem. find <coughs> amount of heat required to change 10 gram ice from minus 20 degrees Celsius to 10 degrees Celsius water. Just let me give you some hint how to solve it. You'll say, temperature versus heat. So initially, ice would be at this point, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So on supplying heat, it will convert into ice at zero degrees Celsius. So let's say this is Q1. So this heat will be termed as specific heat. So Q1 will be mass of ice, specific heat of ice, change in temperature, that is 20 degrees Celsius. Further, if you supply heat, it will convert state from ice to water. So this heat will be termed as latent heat of fusion. So Q2 will be equals to mass of ice times latent heat of fusion constant. Further, it has to increase its temperature to 10 degrees Celsius. So let's say this is Q3. So Q3 will be equals to mass of ice, which has converted into water times a specific heat capacity of water, change in temperature, 110 degrees Celsius. Hamza, is it clear? Yes, sir. Just put all the values and try to simplify and just add them all.
I is for ice. So specific heat capacity of ice I have given you above. Just use these values. First, try to calculate each term in calorie and then convert into joule by multiplying with 4.2. Hamza, any problem while solving? Uh, no, sir. Almost none. Okay.
Hamza, in which unit do you have calculated? Calorie or joule? Sir, joule. Okay, just one minute. Hamza, just check your calculation. Let me solve. Mass of ice, we have 10 gram. Specific heat capacity of ice is 0.5. Change in temperature is 20. So if you multiply this all, 20 into 10, 200 into 0.5, just 100 calorie. For this part, mass of ice is 10. Latent heat of fusion constant for ice will be 80. So 800 calorie. And this part, 10 gram, specific heat of water is one and change in temperature is 10. So it will be 100 calorie. So on adding all, Q unit will be 100 plus 800 plus 100. It will be thousand calorie. Good Hamza. So thousand into 4.2, it will be 4200 Joule. Khalid, you got the same answer? I got till thousand calorie. Well, after okay, that, okay. I did not multiply with Joule. Okay, good, no problem. Next, related to this part, suppose I ask you, how much water at 100 degrees Celsius is required or simply <coughs> find amount of water required at 100 degrees Celsius to evolve thousand calorie on changing to 10 degrees Celsius. It means initially we have water at 100 degrees Celsius. On reaching to 10 degrees Celsius, it may have evolved 1000 calorie heat. So how much water it will require for this process? Let's say water is initially at this point. So on cooling down to 10 degrees Celsius, it may have evolved this much amount of energy. So find mass of water for this process. 
So Q equals to mass of water, specific heat capacity of water, teen in temperature. Just put the value of Q to be 1000 calorie. Rest of them is given. Try to find mass of water required for this process. Khalid, check the unit. <clears throat> Good. Hamza, you got the answer? Almost. Okay. Good, Hamza. Q, we have 1,000 calorie. Mass of water required. Specific capacity of water is 1. And change in temperature, that is 100 minus 10. So it will be 90. So mass of water will be 1,000 divided by 90. 10 divided by 100 divided by 9. So it will be 11.1 gram. So if you mix those two questions together, so you will say at what temperature or fine mass of water required to change 10 gram of ice, which is initially at minus 20 degrees Celsius, to convert it at 10 degrees Celsius for equilibrium. Or let me give you another question for these type. If 10 gram ice at zero degrees Celsius is mixed with five gram water at 100 degrees Celsius, find
resulting temperature of mixture. So what will happen in this case? You will say ice will first melt into water and then its temperature would increase from zero degrees Celsius to some equilibrium temperature, T degrees Celsius. So first, for every process, draw temperature versus heat graph and plot the variation for each different substance. Initially, we have ice at minus zero degrees Celsius at this point. So it will require some heat to move this point and further to this point, Q1 and Q2. For the same mixture, we have water initially at 100 degrees Celsius. So it may cool down to this equilibrium temperature and may have evolved some amount of energy, let's say capital Q1. So amount of heat evolved by this hot water will be utilized in changing state as well as raising temperature of ice. So at equilibrium, it may acquire some temperature T. Hamza, is it clear? Yes, sir. So you will say heat lost by water heat lost by water will be equals to heat gained by ice. Heat lost by water will be mass of water, specific capacity of water, change its temperature, 100 minus some temperature equilibrium T. And this heat will be being absorbed by water, ice, to convert its state from ice into water plus to raise its temperature from zero degrees Celsius to T degrees Celsius. Now just put all the values in this expression and try to find the value of T. Hiba, is it clear what is going on in this whole part? Yes, sir. Okay.
You may solve this particular part in some other way also. First, try to calculate how much heat it would require to go from ice to water. Then how much heat it would evolve to go from 100 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. First part, how much heat would require to go from zero degrees Celsius ice to zero degrees Celsius water. Mass of ice, latent to fusion of ice. Mass of ice we have 10, latent of fusion is 80, so it will be 800 calorie. Now just try to calculate how much heat it would evolve on going from 100 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. Mass of water, specific capacity of water, change in temperature. Mass of water, five, specific heat, one, change in temperature. So it will be 500 calorie. So will it be possible to raise its temperature from zero degree Celsius to some higher temperature? Hamza? Just compare these two heat, which is greater? The ice, heat of ice. Good, so we can say we have more amount of cold energy as compared to heat energy. So at equilibrium, it will be at this point. and it had evolved some capital Q amount of heat. And at this instant, this whole system still have some cold energy. We have 800 calorie cold energy by conversion of ice and 500 heat energy by conversion of water from 100 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. So, net will be 800 minus 500, it will be 300 calorie. And this amount of energy will be cold energy, which further tries to freeze some amount of water into ice. So let me show. So using this part, some amount of water will freeze. So Q equals to mass times latent heat of fusion. So mass will be equals to Q divided by latent heat of fusion. We have Q 300 amount of latent of fusion constant 80, zero, zero cancel out, 18 to four, 18 to three, 24, six, zero, eight, seven, 56, eight, five, 40. 3.75 gram will convert into ice, the rest will remain in water. Is it clear? Let me define the whole process. What is initially we had 10 gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius. So if you have to convert this ice into water at zero degrees Celsius, you must have to apply this much amount of heat energy to this particular system. And we have five gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius. So from 100 to zero degrees Celsius on moving from this point to this point, it may evolve this much amount of heat energy to this particular system. So for this part, I have just calculated both these two energies. Q1 from this point to this point, which is going to be 800 calorie and capital Q1, just 500 country. Just compare these two parts. So you'll observe we have more amount of cold energy as compared to heat energy. 
Is it clear? Yes, sir. Khalid, any doubt? No, sir, no doubt. So this, the larger cold energy will further tries to <clears throat> freeze some amount of water from this state to ice. So I just calculated how much we have extra amount of cold energy in this particular system. So Q net is 800 minus 500, that is 300 calorie we have extra and this equilibrium cold energy, which will try to freeze some amount of water. So Q equals to mass times of liquid of fusion. Q we have given 300 calorie. Mass we have to calculate, liquid of fusion is given. Put all the values and simplify it. So you'll get 3.75 gram. It means we had total 10 gram of ice that has converted into water plus five gram water that has converted from 100 to zero degrees Celsius. So in total, we had 15 gram water initially at zero degrees Celsius. So from this part, 3.75 gram got converted into ice. So you're left with 15 minus 3.75, that is 11.25 gram water and 3.75 gram ice and both these two will be at same temperature, zero degrees Celsius. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Hiba, any doubt? No, sir. Okay, just write it down. Now, related to this part, there is a concept.
water equivalent suppose q equals to mass of water specific capacity of water times change in temperature so if i define this particular heat for any substance so it will be mass of substance specific capacity of substance times change in temperature now just equate these two quantity so you will get mass of water specific capacity of water equals to mass of substance times specific capacity of substance so from this expression mass of water equals to this quantity so this mass in terms of this mass of substance times specific capacity of substance will be termed as water equivalent so instead of giving you the value of mass and specific heat constant for that particular material they will give you water equivalent so how will you solve for water equivalent mass of substance times specific capacity of substance equals to water equivalent multiplied by specific capacity of water is it clear why they will give you water equivalent instead of giving you mass of that particular substance and specific capacity of that particular substance they will give you water equivalent related to this part so for water equivalent that is mass of water in comparison with this part just multiply it by specific capacity of water you will get the product of mass and specific heat of that particular substance is it clear yes sir let me give you a question a calorie meter having water equivalent 0.8 gram fine heat required to change its temperature from 20 degrees celsius to 50 degrees celsius try to solve using the above concept
Hamza, any doubt while solving? Uh, still not yet. Okay. Just put all the values in this part and simplify it. Good, Hamza. Khalid, you got any answer? Good. Hiba? We have water equivalent. Check the unit, Hiba, 0.8 gram, specific heat capacity of water is 1 multiplied by 30. So it will be 24 calorie. Okay. So this is all about calorimetry and exchange of or transfer of state. Next is, heat transfer <clears throat> for this heat transfer we really have to define three different process first conduction second convection and third radiation in which the second part is deleted from your syllabus. So you're left with just conduction and radiation. So let's start with conduction. So 
suppose you have any conductor initially both these two end will be at same temperature so there will be no flow of heat between two ends now if you increase the temperature of one end let's say this end becomes t1 and this other end at some temperature t2 where t1 is greater than t2 this rise in temperature will define or will increase thermal energy of particle at this extreme end let's say initially particles are placed at this point which may have some initial temperature due to which they may have some small thermal kinetic energy due to that temperature so it may vibrate to some small distance to this point now on increasing temperature thermal energy of particle of this end will increase so it will tend to vibrate to some longer distance this point during this process they may get collide with its neighboring particle arranged at this point on collision they will transfer some of their energy to them and by this process energy will transfer from one end to another this whole process is called conduction or simply heat transfer by conduction method hamza is it clear yes sir so you'll say on increasing temperature thermal energy of particle increases so <coughs> they will vibrate to longer distance during which they collide with neighboring particle and transfer some of the energy in this process continues till heat from one end got transferred to other khalid any doubt no sir okay just try to down
Hamza, Dan? Yes, sir. Now, to define this conduction process, let me relate with electricity what you have done in class 10th. Electric current and heat conduction or simply heat current. Suppose I have any conductor. For electricity or for electric current to flow through any conductor, you must require some potential difference across its end. So let's say potential difference is V1 and V2. In this part, we would require some potential difference. Delta V equals to V1 minus V2. V1 is at higher potential and V2 is at lower potential. Similarly, for heat flow, we must require some temperature difference. Let's say this is at higher temperature and lower temperature. So temperature difference delta T equals to T1 minus T2. Is it clear to this part? Yes, yes sir. sir. Now, this particular conductor will have some length. <clears throat> Area of cross section. Similarly, this conductor, they have some length. Area of cross section. So related to this part, if I ask you to define resistance, you must have learned about resistance in class 10 and how to solve for any particular conductor. Resistance is rho L by E. If you replace this particular rho, rho is resistivity. So in terms of conductivity, it will be 1 by sigma L by E. Rho is just reciprocal of sigma, where sigma is called conductivity, and rho is resistivity. Similarly, we may define according to heat flow, resistance offered by it, so R equals to or resistance due to temperature or thermal resistance will be one by sigma. So for this heat, we'll call it as K length by area of cross section. So K in this part is called thermal conductivity, which is equivalent to sigma for electricity. Is it clear till this part? Yes, sir. Next is current. So current is nothing but rate of flow of charge. So electric current. Electric is defined for electron or simply charge. Current is defined for flow. So we can say I equals to flow of charge per unit time. Similarly, for right hand part in which heat is flowing, so we can say 
heat current denoted by H, amount of flow of heat through a conductor per unit time. So in this part, Q is charge, and in this part, Q is heat. Khalid, any doubt? No, sir. Now, you must have learned about Ohm's law in class 10th. Just tell me. Tell me about Ohm's law. There was a relation between potential difference applied across its end versus current flowing through it. The more you increase potential difference applied, the more you get current through it. It means- Current is proportional to volt. Good. So according to Ohm's law, you can say, applied potential difference proportional to current or current proportional to applied potential difference. So I equals to potential difference by resistance. Put the value of I, so it will be Q by T. And if you put the value of resistance for this part, you will get sigma A times potential difference by length. Similarly for heat, H equals to potential difference by resistance. H is amount of flow of heat per unit time and will be equals to Ka delta T divided by N. Is it quite similar, these two things? Hamza, any doubt? Uh, no, sir. So if you remember this particular formula related to electricity, it will become more easier for you. Okay? Just write it down to this.
You are not done? Yes, sir. Hamza, done? Yes, sir, done. Any doubt related to this part? No, sir. Okay, just revise up to this and try to do some problem related to this part. We'll stop here. In next class, I will define you some problem related to this and then combination, what you have learned in class 10, that is series combination and parallel combination of resistor. Similarly, we have to derive it for heat current, okay? Okay, then we'll continue next class. That's it. Okay, take care. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz. Thank you, sir. Allah Hafiz.